This is the Business Leadership Series Minute with your host, the best-selling author of Don't Buy a Duck and founder of MarketingStrategyHero.com, Derek Champagne. I'm excited about my friend here today, Derek Stone, an entrepreneur, musician, author. I like him already. His new book is Why Should I Forgive? And it's a, uh, it's a big topic, man. It's a heavy topic, and it's something that's not easy to write about. <clears throat> and I'm glad that you did. Derek, thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. Derek, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. It's an honor. Hey, I've gotten to know you a little bit uh, in a mastermind that we're in. We've got some great people in that mastermind like Tommy Breedlove and Aaron Walker and so many others that I've gotten the chance sure. to have been on this program and have been life-changing for me. You and I talked, I think, about a year ago because we missed each other this past month, and you told me about this book that you were writing. I remember mm-hmm. we, were in a, we were in the foyer, and you were telling me about it. I said, I want to talk to you about that when you, when you write it. And yeah. we've gotten rescheduled a few times, but, man, it's really been on my heart to be able to talk to you um, because I just, I just love the raw story that you share. And I think it's really important for our listeners to hear this. So if you don't mind, just take a few minutes and kind of talk about your life. Just give us some highlights of, of who Derek is, like some, kind of play that projector reel. I'm old school. Gotcha. For a minute. Real fast. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. So um, I grew up in Mobile, Alabama for uh, 10 years. I lived there and grew up in Section 8 government project housing. It was a neighborhood off Dauphin Island Parkway. Um, and then uh, there I talk about in the book, I was I had been abused by my stepfather and uh, sexually abused. Um, until I was 12 and then my mom got a divorce from him and um, going into 11th grade there's a lot of that happened in between them but going into 11th grade my mom met another another man and got remarried moved us to a small town and uh, outside of Tupelo Mississippi me and my twin brother the other two siblings were already at the house at that point and um, there is where my story changed dramatically and then Got met my wife there, got married there, uh, lived there for another five or six years or so, and then felt the calling to come to Nashville. Uh, and I was a touring musician during that time as well. And I, I, I just really wanted to get to Nashville to make my dream happen. And so uh, ended. I've been I've been in Nashville to, since 2010 after the flood, and been here ever since. So, well, you shared a lot in there already. Um, <laughs> <laughs> talk to me about. I mean, give me more details as far as. Your mindset as a child, were you, I mean, I know a lot of people playing music at, the way I grew up too, is it was an outlet for them. Tell me how, what music was for you in mm-hmm. your life. Was it a savior? Was it an outlet? Was it a crutch? Was it, was it your, your ticket? Like, what was it for you? <laughs> give me, give me insight into that. Cause I, I know the mindset of an, of a musician, entrepreneur, I, I fit in that category at one point. Yeah. Um, and I know the ups and downs and the disappointments and the way you, you know, you moved to Nashville, you don't move to Nashville to, uh, uh, to hang out. You moved to right. Nashville to, to become a rock star, become a. That's exactly star. right. So tell, to give me, give me the story behind music because I'm a, a passionate about that part of things. Sure. And tell me kind of how it transpired for you. Well, in uh, what happened was in eighth grade, my twin brother and I moved to my dad's, and at the end of the year, in that eighth grade year, they had two bands. They had a talent show. I had nothing, no idea about it. And these two bands played a band, uh, played a song called "Smells Like Teen Spirit" by Nirvana, and then the other band played "Zero" by the Smashing Pumpkins, and the crowd went berserk. And I said, "Dude, I've got to freaking do that." So I had this old guitar that my grandmother, I mean, my mom had gotten me. It was my great grandfather's guitar, and it just sat in the. They tried to. Teach me country songs on it and stuff and I, I just wasn't having it so um but after i saw that reaction to the crowd i said oh dude i gotta do this so i actually taught myself how to play uh the internet was just now kind of a new thing and i actually got on the internet and found guitar tabs and i actually was reading them wrong if the first two months i was learning how to play and then i realized oh that don't sound right at all and then then i flipped it over and realized oh that's the way it's supposed to be played 